must uh, pick this up somewhere. sunny day, they'll say. Sure, I'll say, fine sunny day. No use trying to tell them that you hate a fine sunny day. Wish it would rain once in a while. Wish it would rain, you say. Huh? They say. <laughs> They're both handers. Says he wish it was going to rain. What well, kind of man like rain? <clears throat> Everybody else likes what he likes. By the jumping Jiminy Hooser, she's got that scrap iron set out for breakfast again. I can't eat scrap iron. Roughage, they call it. It's a mild word for it, roughage. It's got a cutting edge like a diamond drill. <laughs> minutes before the car goes. I know it does. I, I know, ma'am. Uh, uh, I'll call him. Come on, then. <laughs> Hannes. Yes, ma'am. Did you leave that towel on the doorknob? I, uh, uh, no, ma'am. No? Yes, ma'am, I think I did. Haven't I told you 10,000 times to leave the towels in the bathroom? Yes, ma'am, I... I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I wasn't sure where I got it. <laughs> You weren't sure? No, ma'am. For goodness sake, Hannes, where would a person get a towel? Yes, ma'am. Steve was in the bathroom, and that's what happened. Steve must have been in the bathroom. I couldn't figure out what to do with the towel. Then, so... Quit talking to yourself. I can't stand it the way you talk to yourself, and you do it all the time. Yes, ma'am. Drive people crazy. We'll all be as crazy as you if you keep on. Crazy? She thinks I'm crazy. Will you quit talking to yourself? Yes, ma'am. Steve was in the bathroom. That's what happened. Shouldn't scare a man half to death. A man can't think when he's scared. You get me so scared, I don't know what you say. And then you say you give up. Gee, who said I gave up way back in 1915? Good morning, Hannes. <laughs> you better put that towel back in the bathroom. Too late, no time. Sit down, Hannes. Hey. Oh, Hannes! Yeah. Yeah. Do you mind if I don't eat my brand this morning? It's uh, almost 25 of. Uh, Oh, eat whatever you like, both of you. Put the toast in the toaster. It's not one of our better mornings, Dennis. No, Steve, it's a all this morning. Uh, We're yeah. way down. Uh, beautiful morning, you know. Birds in the trees, sun shining in the sky, dandelions looking right back up at me. But the wife's under a cloud, Hannes. Well, I wish it would rain. It's gonna rain. I can tell it in my bones. Oh! Uh, what's the matter, Martin? If we must live in a house with a complete half-wit, at least you could try and teach him something instead of picking up his half-wit. Get more like Hannah's every day, oh, my lord. Martha, what have I done? Must you <laughs> dunk your toast and slurp that way? Martha, you're wrong about Hannah's. Well, I tell you, he knows more than most people, don't you, Hannah? Really? Well, I don't know. I don't know how I could get along without him down at the laboratory. Just the same. I can't get along with him here. Anyway, he saved my life, remember? Oh, yes. Always Tell me that. about that. <laughs> Tell me about the picnic. How you fell in the water and hit your head on a rock and went down for the third time. Her whole life went before your eyes in a flash, right? And he had us pulled you out, and so you lived. Isn't that how it went? Well, the water was just going around the bend, so I reached in and grabbed him by the oh. hair. That, that's all it was. 25 years ago. Yes, ma'am. 25 years ago. On the 4th of July. Is it? That was the 4th of July that you got engaged to Stevie. <laughs> it's nice to know gratitude lasts so long. I can't think of any other emotion that holds on that way. It's me. 
25 years ago when he still eats off you and has a bed in your house and sponges off you. If you cared half as much for me as you do for him, you'd know that I couldn't stand to have him here and he'd have to move somewhere else. Well, I, I now, didn't, Hannah, no, she didn't no, mean no, it. Now, you know, no, you said, Hannah, you said that. Huh? He wouldn't have anywhere to go, Hannah. He has to stay here. Anyway, you don't know what he does down at the laboratory. Oh, yes, I do. No, you don't now. He works with me. Mm. He earns his share, too. Why yeah. doesn't he get paid, then? Because they don't understand about him down there. They don't know about you, that egg hamster. He works next to me all the time. Just standing there and not talking, and and, and, and I'm there working or something, and well, he talks to himself. He doesn't he, talk, he, has. He, he burps, that's all. And sometimes, maybe I can't think of what to do. I'm stuck, see? And he'll poke his head into whatever it is, <laughs> and he'll say, why don't you try this, see, like that. He'll say, try this, and it'll be some idiot foolish thing that wouldn't work anyway and stupid, but it'll start me thinking, and then maybe I'll be able to go ahead and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Is that what Hannes does in the laboratory? That's it. Why couldn't you think of it for yourself? I don't know, but I couldn't. Well, better eat your breakfast. Well, I don't want any breakfast. Mom. I don't want any either. Then any you'd better wipe that egg off your chin. Martha. Stephen, for 25 years you've been telling me you have to have Hannes in the laboratory to help with inventions. We have been married for 25 years. And for every one of those 25, I have hoped and waited Hoped and waited until my hopes worn thin, and I am worn thin. Every year you invent something, and I think maybe this year it's going to mean something to you and me. Maybe we'd be able to have an apartment in town, and a servant, and I wouldn't have to cook and wash and make my own garden. And every time an invention comes along, what happens? It belongs to the company. And do you get a raise in salary so that maybe we could live a little better? And I could have some pretty clothes and maybe go to a concert in the afternoon or play bridge or something. No, the company makes the money and you are still in a laboratory at $27.50 a week. And a barnacle named Hannah Starr boarding with us. Oh, now, Martha. Can't you get angry? If you could get angry with me just once, it might mean you'd have enough gumption to stand up for your rights at the factory. A man of your ability, $27.50 a week? A man of your record? You invented one of the first automobiles and you sold them the patents. And they have made so much money out of it, they don't even know what to do with it all. And the washing machine that you invented that everybody else in the world can afford except me and a piano action. But I don't have a piano. The best-selling vacuum cleaner in the world is the one you put together to clean up Hannes after the near beer exploded. <laughs> you listen to me! I can't think of anything you haven't invented except money. And everybody makes money out of you and steals the credit from you and takes your patents away. And nobody has ever heard you get angry or ever complain or even ask for a raise. But why do the company pays me for my services? Do they? Yes. How many times a millionaire is Mr. Charlie Duffy and what did he ever do? Martha, I... Well, I just can't explain it to you. I don't want you to explain it to me. I want something to happen. Well, I might get a raise. Mm -hmm. I, might. Oh. I deserve one. Mm -hmm. can't You'll deny. never get a raise because you won't have the gumption to ask for it. I guess you're right, Martha. Stephen, we've got to go. Martha, I'm sorry. Doesn't matter. It's too late to do anything about it now. Don't we still love each other, Martha? Do we? It's hard to stay in love on twenty-seven fifty a week. I thought we were still in love, Martha. Oh, you haven't thought about it. You haven't thought about me for so long. I can't remember when it ever happened. You think about inventions. And Hannes, and the company, and the rights of man, and the war in Spain, but you don't think about me. You should have married somebody else. That's what you should have done. Oh, now, Martha, it's no good talking like that. No, it really is. No, but I mean it. I mean it. You might have been somebody if it hadn't been for me, and I might have been somebody too. Oh, now, you can't say you held me back. Oh, yes. You cannot say that. Yes, you sold the patent to the car engine so that we could get married, didn't you? Took up job in the factory and we haven't had any money since. Should have married Hallie. Hallie? Hallie who? Hallie Arlington. 
The one who married your boss, Marge. She wanted you. Huh? Mm. Why, I haven't thought about her for 20 years. I don't even know if I'd recognize her now. Oh, don't you? <laughs> you should have married her. Mm. And I should have married somebody else. Who? Stephen, we gotta go. Quiet. Stephen, we're, Stephen, we're gonna be late are to you, the factory. Are you thinking about Paul Riger, the tenor with the long neck? He's in New York now, and he owns a whole steel company. I should have married him, and you should have married her. We'd both be rich by now. Mm. I wish I knew what to do, Martha. Just go to work. Martha, I wasn't going to tell you this yet, but I've been working on something. Something big, Martha. This is something that, well, well, if I finish this, they're going to have to give me a raise, right, huh? Stephen, if this one works, you own the earth. Yeah, I'll be somebody, Martha. It, it's, it's an invention. It's an invention I've been working at on the side, and, 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 and well, I'm going to get a raise, Martha. This is big. It's so exciting, I can't even talk about it. Yeah. I, I, you know what it makes me feel like? It's if I'd written a poem, Martha. A great sort of poem, all in, all in symbols and lines of life. Like uh, Burton Brady. Right. Ray, this is better, Martha. This is like I'd stumbled on the equation that everybody's looking for. Mm. By accident, sort of, because I never would have dared to look for it, but it's there. Uh. It's there, Martha. And I found it. And no doubt they'll make a lot of money out of it. Oh, and Martha, there's something else I gotta tell you. That's that that just just working at it, just just trying to find it mm. is better than the money. Mm. That's the best part, Martha. Sometimes I think they can keep the money because I got the mm. best. Sometimes I think they can have all the money. Uh, as long as they let me work there and try to find things and work at them, because that's the best part of my life. It's so good that if, if they knew about it, they'd take it away from me. Well, maybe you'd better tell them about it. They might think you're holding out on them. But I am, Martha. I'm holding out on the best thing in the world, don't you see? No. I'm an old woman. Maybe if you're crazy enough like you two, you can imagine you've got something, but I am not crazy enough. I have never had a car. I've never had a house. I've never had pretty clothes. Nothing but the satisfaction of doing my own work, and that's no satisfaction anymore. When we had a piano, we couldn't keep up the payment, so they took it away from us. Martha, you really wish you'd married the steel company man? Yes, I do, for both of us. Look, we're old people. What have we ever had? Each other, Martha, because we were in love. People fall in love when they're young and they think that's all there is. They'll never want anything else. But that wears out, that living on nothing and being in love, it wears out. And the rest's work. Maybe it's fun for you. Oh, that was our streetcar, right. Stephen. I know it was, I know. Come on. We'll be late now. You know we'll be late. You know, Martha, I wish you could see it. I wish I could. Goodbye, Martha. Bye. Not here yet, I guess. <laughs> you can take a look at it. <laughs> Funniest looking contraption I've ever seen. What's this? Uh, pretty hard to say. <laughs> How long has he been working on it? Yeah, quite a while. On the company's time. Sure, he uses company materials, too. They don't give me that much leeway. They don't give anybody that much leeway. He's been here a long time ago. They say he knows more about rubber than anybody in the business. Never touched it till this year. He's supposed to be working on it right now. Turning out that new tire. Yeah. I hear that's good. Oh, he knows the stuff, all right. Never had any education. One of these so-called intuitive guys. That means trial and error method. Waste more time than anything else on research. Sure does. Only what are you going to do? Every once in a while, they hit on something. Huh. Just often enough to keep on going. Steve's wanted in the office, boys. Will you tell him? Steve, he's not here yet. Not here? 
Perhaps the old man's ready to explode now. When he hears this, he'll blow the roof off the administration building. We'll send him right over as soon as he comes in. Sure, how about Hannah? No, thanks, we don't need Hannah. Well, well. Wrong day to be late, evidently. Yeah. How long has Steve been working at this thing, Angela? That? I don't know, sir. Well, you must know how long it's been here. Yeah, four or five years. You don't know what it is? No, sir. Yes, sir. He said he was making himself safe. He said it was a safe. Hey. <laughs> That's all I wanted Steve Lynch in the office. Well, he's not here yet, Mr. Duffy. What do you mean he's not here yet? My God, Apple, if I can get here at 9 in the morning, the employees can get here at 9 in the morning, and you'll see they do. Yes, sir. I gave up my golf to get here at nine. That damn staff wanders in with that damn please. One of the penalties of responsibility, no doubt. Well, by God almighty, there'll be some penalties for other people around here. Park! Yes, sir. What in the hell's the matter with Steve Minch? Well, I, I don't know, sir. Well, find out. Somebody find out and get him here. Is this company run for the convenience of a lot of damn communistic employees, or are we in business by any chance? Who are you? My name's Ripple, sir. Whipple? Ripple. Oh, 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 new man, huh? Well, uh, well, dig in. Dig into that uh, carbon idea. Maybe you'll get somewhere. Nine o'clock in the morning, I gotta wait around here for a dozen. What is this? Oh, it's something Steve Minch has been working on, sir. Says it's a safe. Says it's a safe? Well, well uh, don't you get reports? Don't you know what it is? Uh, no, sir. Steve doesn't always make reports. Oh, he doesn't always, doesn't always make reports. Well, I thought he was working on that rubber analysis. Well, he is. That is, he's supposed to be. Well, isn't he? Well, well, yes, he is, but he seems to find time to put on this thing, too, sir. He finds time to put on this thing. Well, by God, I've had enough. I've had enough right now. Who else knows about rubber around here? Well, well, Ripple studied it, sir. I specialized in it over at the Brook Plant. Oh, yeah, specialized over in the Brook Plant. Yeah, well, have you followed this stuff Steve's been doing? Uh, in a general way, yes. Well, can you handle his work? That's what I want to know. And mind you, I want quick results. Well, I, I think I could. I, I'm certain I could. Uh, I'd like Ripple to help me. Well, you'll get the chance. By God, you'll get the chance. Tell Minch to report to me when he comes in. Yes, sir. Hell in high water. Boy, I know less about rubber than you do. I, I, I know enough. Why do you want me in on it? Just for fun. Why don't you get us both fired? Listen, Steve's worked out all the possible formulae for rubber and then put it away in a card index. It's, it's in this letter file over here. You take those with him if he goes. They belong to the company. He'd leave them here? He would. He's that honest? <laughs> yes, it's painful. <laughs> He's just criminal. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. We were supposed to tell you the boss wants to see you right away, Steve. Yeah, I know, I know. I told me we're going right over there. I just put a couple of tubes on to boil. Light as the devil this morning. Oh, now let me at these, will you please? I got to get at that fire over there. I guess a fellow like you can afford to be late. Why? Oh, you've got a lot under your hat. You're needed around here. Oh, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. I've seen too many fellas get out of college and go right up over my head right to the top. I've seen seven generations of them. Green as grass and dumb as goats. Go flying up over my head like sparks in the wind. You'll do it yourself. Oh, no. Oh, yes, you will. They all do. Uh, I guess you're pretty busy. Uh, uh, we'll blow. Yeah, goodbye, boys. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that for gumption? Martha well, should have heard. Oh, morning. Hey, who's been messing with my tube, Stephen? I laid a tube down here this morning. It's been moved. Angela? Never touched that bench. Mr. Park was looking at it. Yeah, I knew he was a college snoop. Barging in here with their arms full of diplomas, just hanging around long enough so they can date all the stenographers in the outer office. No more brain than a lightning rod. We can work faster if you talk less. Paw all over my test tubes. Coming in here and looking at our machine. <laughs> it's working. Hannes, you know what I think? No. 
I think there's something we'd rather do this morning than go and see the old man. You know what it is? Yeah, we better not. Yeah, you think we better just scurry on over there, huh? You're damn right we better scurry on over there. Oh, you know what I think? No. In ten minutes, we can have it done, and Charlie can wait. Yeah, done so it works. Done so it works, and then what's he gonna say, we huh? Better, we better not. Watch the dial tonight. Hey, Stephen, now, I wouldn't want to have to go home and say we got fired. You just watch the dials. What have you got? 1600. A.D.? That's right. Now what have you got? 1750. Month? Yeah, April. Date? Yeah, the 27th. It's awful, though. You better reach up there and turn the set screw there. No, the other way, the other way. That's enough, that's enough. Hey, hey, Stephen. Huh? Why did you build us here, machine? Why? Yeah. Why? Well, I just happened on it, Hannes, and it's a great idea, isn't it? Yeah, but you weren't planning on using it, were you? Well, we might try it out. Uh... <laughs> you always want to get stuck somewhere way back. Keep your mind on your business, huh? Mm. All right, now what do you get? Oh. <laughs> December 15th, 1878. Does it tell fortunes? Why? That's my birthday. Does it tell fortunes? I can tell your fortune, Mr. Hannes. What do you mean? You're gonna get fired today. Don't say that. Don't say that! Well, I'm sorry to disturb you. Uh, very to work this morning, aren't you? Oh, uh, we, we, we were just... Did you get my message? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we were just coming. Yes, sir. We were just coming. Oh, well, that's uh, quite a concession, isn't it? A couple of giant intellects like yours taking time off from your work to communicate with the president of the company? Uh, I shouldn't have expected it. No, 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 no. Let me come to you. Don't let me take you from your work. Who the hell do you think you are? We were uh, late as well. Oh, well, that explains everything. You were late this morning. Well, I wasn't late. I came in early to see you. I came in early because the tire you turned out for the spring models wanted to be redesigned. We've only got seven days to do it. Seven days? Well, that can be done, can oh. it? Oh, it can. Dyes, presses, molds, formulae, the whole damn set up to be readjusted and 10,000 sample tires scrapped all in a week. And that's easy, huh? And who got us into this jam? Who gave us the formula for that tire? Was there anything wrong with it? Wrong with it? We can't wear it out, you dumb fuck. They've worn out two cars on one set of those tires. They've gone 130,000 miles on the proving track and they can't wear the tread off the rear wheels. But you asked me to improve the mileage. I asked you to improve the mileage by about 5,000 miles. I asked you for a 22,000 mile tire, not a 130,000 mile tire. Are you trying to wreck the tire business all over the United States? Well, I, I should think that the better the tire is, the more mileage you can get would be fine. Stephen, you must be crazy. I've known you for 40 years and you know as well as I do the profit in the tire business comes from replacements. If we equip our car with tires that won't wear out, we stand to lose seven million a year. What's more, we're pledged to the Rubber Association not to produce a tire that does better than 30,000 miles. They've been going crazy with it over there in the proving ground, and I've been going crazy here in the office because the squawk comes back to me, and you knew it would. Oh, I did not know it would. I just, uh, just didn't understand. That's didn't what understand mean. what? I, I thought you wanted me to turn out as good a tire as I knew how. But I told you, didn't I? Yes, you did. I guess I just didn't believe you. I mean, it just didn't seem quite... Honest to me not to turn out the best tire I knew how. Well, now you know, right? Now you understand? Yes. Well, when can I have the formula for a 22,000 mile tire? I guess I could get it to you by tomorrow. I thought I told you to test a whole series from 15,000 miles to 50. Yeah, I just haven't had time to finish it. Why I not? You've had time enough. I've been working on something else. Why? Something more important, no doubt. Yeah, it's much more important. More important than your job? What do you think? Okay. Who lets that crank in here? Apple, is he on the payroll? No, sir. Well, they're both fired. Go get his check for him. And never mind about tomorrow, will you? Oh, but about the machine, if you knew what it was. I don't care what it is. Oh, but you will. You will when I tell you about All it. All right, what is it? Well, it's, it's something that's kind of hard to believe. It's hard to believe. It's like, it's like the radio was when it first came out. You just couldn't believe it. I said, all right, what is it? Well, I can't really tell you what the principle of it is because I don't understand it myself. It's, I just know how it works. Now, the radio's like that. Nobody knows why the waves act the way they do. They just know how they act. Now, this here is a machine that picks up waves, too. But it picks them up anywhere. 
a year ago or two years ago. Yeah, it picks up old programs. That's no, not much good. It picks up anything, anywhere at all, the kind of thing we used to think was a miracle. Well, uh, well uh, can you give it a name? Well, we, we call it the Star Wagon. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really that you ride on it or anything. We just call it that. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. And it picks up old uh, way. Well, that's very you, interesting. You see, people always used to think that time was like a string of beads. <laughs> like we were all beads on a string, but it isn't that way at all. Oh, no, no, I can see that. Yeah, beads on a string. Well, it, it's more like a moving platform. Moving platform. Think of it this way, picture it. Time is like a moving platform, but you can get on it or off it anywhere you want. Now, well, there's another way to put it. Some people understand it better if you tell them that time is like the banks of a canal. Mm -hmm. Picture it, the banks of a canal. Mm -hmm. You're not picturing it. We move up through the middle of the banks, see, on boats, like canal boats. Yeah. Now, the banks are always there. They never go away. They don't... Now, if we could find a way of moving our boats back and forth in the canal... You see, Mr. Duffy, with that switch there, you just throw it. And there you are! Oh, you just throw it and there you are. <laughs> Why, you poor fish, I knew you were crazy, but I thought you were harmless. What are you doing? I got what are you locking that door for? So they won't listen to yourself there. Give me that key, canal folks, for now. First you set it for time and space, see? Then you hold on tight, and you pull the switch, and then you don't move. And the machine doesn't move, but everything else goes past you like a shot. All time and space. And it leaves you where you want to be. Damn it, where do you think I want to be? I don't know. In my own office. When? When? Half an hour ago, you lunatic, or last year, if it suits you better. We'll make it last year. Now, if you... No, you don't. Give me that. Give me that. As I said before, you're fired. Before you go home, you better have your head examined. I promise you, you're making a mistake. And before you get your check, you return that rubber formula to the company. They belong to the company. Apple! Hey, yes, sir. Have that nut machine scrapped for the materials. God knows what they poured into it. Well, they requisitioned uh, 13 pints of mercury and uh, three and a half pounds of platinum wire, sir. 13 pints of mercury. My God, that's $5,000 tied up in that mess. Rip it out. Hey, yes, sir. I'll have it scrapped tomorrow. Oh, you... I'll rip you, sir. Yes, by God, what? I'll rip... You can't... Do this, Mr. Duffy. Why not? <laughs> Don't you see we've happened into one thing everybody's looking for, Charlie? Don't Charlie me. Mr. Duffy, they all said we'd find it. Up to now, it's all been theory about yes. the fourth dimension. They all said it was there. The mathematicians said it was there. The physicists said it was there. But after they got through writing their books, they went right back into Euclid, and they can't find their way out of them. But Euclid's just an illusion, isn't he, Hannah? Yes. You can walk right <laughs> through them. Why, there aren't any right angles in space or any straight lines. There's nothing positive about time or space. Everything that ever happened is still happening right now. And matter isn't solid, is it, Hannah? No, no. Material isn't any more solid than a wave of light from the sun. I got it all written down, but it's in symbols. It's in symbols? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Treat them gently, Ethel. They're raving. Yes, sir. Raving man. Yes. Charlie! I've known you ever since the days back in the choir. And I've always earned more than you paid me, always. And only this morning, I, I promised Martha that this machine could make a difference. And it would if you just make it. Mr. Apple. I don't know how to use words. I, I never had to use them, but don't don't break it up. I, I'd never have the heart to make it again, and I'll, I'll pay you for it as soon as I can, and it's a thing that's never been in the world before. Oh, here's his check. Thank you. Oh, what a sweetheart that is. What a sweet heart that one Smash my invention. I'm going to take it away before they break it up. Yeah. All right, I'll let them in, but they look a bit too professional to suit me. Let them in, will you? 
I don't like the looks of those birds. Will you go on out of here? Huh? Yeah. When's the Westman come around again? Not till 1.30. You only got an hour. Sometimes he's late. Sometimes. Now, if you gentlemen will let me explain here. I know this is outside of your usual line of work. What do you mean it's outside of your usual line of work? Well, excuse me, I meant no offense. Yes. I merely took it for granted. Something to take for granted, see? Is that it? Yes. Is it safe? How do we move it? Well, it's going to go out that door here. I I'll show you. It's only three feet down to the ground. We could drop it up. No! Good grief, no! Why not? You can't hurt it safe. Well, there's things in it that would break. What? Anyway, it would make more noise than a fire alarm clattering down there on the floor. Okay, baby. What do you want us to do? Make it fast. Well, it's got to go out the door, and I figured we could slide it out by using planks. I don't see any planks. There's a truck gangway in the basement. Ah. Well, let's see it. Yeah, that's the thing. Come on. It, it, it's right down this way. Hey, you too, Fetcher. We did our exercise for today. All right, we'll fetch it. Come on, Alice. We do the work, huh? And there are two ugly monks sit on their can. I don't like them. I don't like the looks of those two at all, Stephen. I don't like What's them. that you said? Me? Nothing. I didn't, didn't say nothing. A couple of WPA workers. Come on, right? will you? If they think I'm gonna bust their gut, where's the safe out of the window, that coop? I don't like this job. The only thing to do with the safe is open it or blow. Wanna beat it? Nah, don't go do a panic. I'm here because I wanna eat tomorrow, so are you. Who is this guy? All I know is he comes up to me in the scarf house. He says, you want a little job? And I says, money in it? I'll give you 20 bucks, he says. That's all I got. Give it to me now, I says. Oh, no, he says. I'll give you when it's done. Tough, I says. What is this uh, blankety-blank job? Thinking he was a parson. I want to move a safe, he says. And I'll take anyway two men. I got a friend, I says, thinking of you, see? Yeah. So I says, how far is this safe being moved? And he says, out of window. So here we are, and there's the safe, and there's the window. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't move any safe on any window. I got other ideas. I get you. This will do it? Yeah, sure, it's fine. Well, don't you want to give us a hand getting it up to the window there? Nah, nah. You two do that part. We had our exercise for today. Oh, we wouldn't want you to spoil your fingers, of course. You gotta keep your fingers delicate. Oh, so you can feel the tumblers dropping in the lock. Uh, you might take up something uh, light sometimes, maybe a little croquet. It's dominoes. Oh, you'll get along faster if you talk less. Ow! I said I'd like to watch a couple of good men work. It does me good just to see it. Yeah, it's just about the whole job. Now, what's this? That's not mine. That belongs to the company. Where are they? They're, they're rubber formulae, and they're all working on it. Don't mix them up, because they're... What? Well, they're valuable, and they're all in order. Well, now they're mine, see? Ooh. Very valuable and all in order. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, you, you, you can't do that. I don't mind about us. You too. You go right on with your work. But... I say go right on with your work. I don't know how we're going to get it. <laughs> Neither do I. You're both pretty light. Look out, Stone! Look out! Look out! What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? It fell. Somebody's coming. I'll say it. You said the right thing, brother.
Is everything all right here? Sure, everything's all right. I don't know you. What the hell? He thinks we're trying to rob the laboratory. Speak to the guy, Professor. It's all right, Misty. You didn't put your name down, Mr. Minch. You didn't put your name down when you came in. I'm sorry, Misty. We now, forgot. look. You fellas are always doing something like that. How was I to know it wasn't burglars in here? Yeah, how was he to know? He might have got me in trouble too, see? So you put your names in the book after this. Jeez, you all like that around here? Now look, well, you better give us a hand. You're certainly amateurs, aren't you? Amateurs? That safe cracker? We're not gonna crack a safe. It looks like damn funny business to me. What's funny about it? If you're moving a safe, you do it by daylight. If oh. you're cracking it, you do it at night. Not always. Absolutely. What's in it? It's mine. How's about going shares? Shares? On what? On what's in it. But there's nothing in it you'd want. I'll know better after I see it. Look, we better see if we can get it over to the window. Okay. Come on, we're all gonna have to help out. I don't get the philosophy of this, boys. We got a safe here with something in it we want. We could waste it out the window and run into the court. What's the sense of this? You could open it here and save yourself all that exertion. But I'm not going to open it. Are you taking it home for a keepsake? Don't you know if you start wheeling this through the street, you'll be stopped by every cop between here where you're going? Look, really, I'm just paying you to help me. I didn't ask you to tell me what to do. Only I'm telling you. I'm telling you now, see? Give me the 20 bucks. It's not yours yet. Where is it? Hey. It's in my back pocket. Now we're gonna help you. Now you're gonna do just as I say, see? Get up there and manipulate them dials. I can't do it. Why not? Because it's a time set. Well, then, just to be helpful, we'll blow it. Blow it? You mean smash it open? Yeah, this is super press. It takes a little of anything. You wouldn't do that. No, not if you open it, no. But I tell you, it can't be done. Then we drill it for soup. No, I say you won't. Oh, you say I won't, but your old lady's gonna have a lot of patching up to do if I start taking you apart. <laughs> You want some more? Oh, look, mister, I don't know what your name is. Oh, never mind my name. There must have been something you wanted sometime back before you got like this and you thought you couldn't go on if you didn't have it. Are you talking about the machine? You're certainly looking for something, but when you won't go far after you get it. Well, I don't care if you kill me. I'm going to fight you for oh, it. Oh, let him have his little machine. Now, what's the matter with you? Hey, I'll make cash out all three. Get out of the way before I fresh your thumb. Where the hell's the lid? Oh, there isn't any lid. Well, then we'll make it. To see the inside of this. I mean, if I had to shoot the watchman. Stephen, you better do something to it. What's the idea, baby? The fastest way is to open it. You better throw the switch, Stephen. What switch? Oh, it's just something you gotta do to make it work. But it's out of the sink, Hannes. I haven't had time to true it up. I don't know if it'll work. If it don't work, you don't lose nothing. I guess you're right. I got nothing to lose and maybe a lot to gain. Now, let me ask you. You're gonna smash it up if I don't do it, right? I'll say I am. Okay, Hannes. Climb on. Quick. Pardon me. What do you want? One. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Two. Check. July 4th. Reach. That's the bicycle shop, Hannes. That's the July 4th where it all happened. When Martha and I could have gone either way. Say, what kind of funny business is this? I told you, it's a time set. It better work. It'll work. Okay, Stephen. July 4th. If that's the combination, I'm a Vesa girl. Now you better brace yourselves, because yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Come on, close the gate. Yeah. One o'clock. Here it goes.
finish me. Well, I didn't know if it would work. But it did. Steve. Huh? Steve. Huh? Look where we are. Yeah. Hey, look. Look at that calendar. July 3rd. I told you it was out of sync, Hannes. We had it set for the 4th. Oh. Gee. I never know I'd see the old bicycle shop again. Yeah. Look at that car. Yeah. Hey, remember there was a whip socket on the dashboard? Sure, I built it that way. That's so if it broke down and you had to use a horse, you'd have a whip to drive with. <laughs> Gee, it's a peach of a little shop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, 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 big Minnie's bicycle. You remember, remember she bet the fork driving in the fire hydrant? Hey, I'm supposed to be working on it. Hey, wait a minute. The minute we get off the machine, we're going to go right back into the old groove. So we better figure out what we're going to do. Gee, it scares you. Yeah. Stephen, look at that mirror. Who is it? Did I look like that? Look at me. No wonder I never got married. <laughs> well, maybe it'll be different this time. <laughs> what are you going to do now that you're back here? I'm going to change everything, Hannes. I'm going to fix it so Martha can marry the celluloid collar boy the way she wanted to. And I'm going to marry the other one. Yeah, but do you think you can do it? I know I can. Stephen! That's Martha! Yeah, yeah, cover it up and take care of what she wants. I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> Hello, Martha. Stephen. Would you pump up a tire for me? Sure, Martha. Boy, oh boy. How do you like them? Well, they're... Uh... <laughs> I like them fine. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> See, I... I... Just never expected to see you wearing anything like that. Well, we're all going to get them, all the girls in the choir. Don't you think they're nice? They don't leave much to the imagination, do they? <laughs> oh, you're horrid. I mean, you're perfectly horrid. Oh, really, Martha? Stay... I, I think they're very fetching. I thought you'd like them anyway. I mean, they're just to ride a bicycle in. I know. If people want to look, they can just... Go ahead and look. Oh, they'll look all right. Where's my butt? I, I mean, go. a fella'd have to be crazy not to look at you no matter what you had on. That's stupid. Did I say something wrong? If I stood here and waited all day, you wouldn't think of the right thing to say. Well, I like it just as much as if I did. More, maybe. There's choir practice tonight, you know. I was coming. Mrs. Rutledge says you'd have a perfectly fine voice if you just worked at it. Well, <laughs> how do you work at a voice? Well, you take lessons, silly. Well, it doesn't sound like the kind of a thing you should take lessons for. I mean, anybody can sing. Well, she says you have an excellent natural placement, but you're a perfect innocent about phrasing. No, I don't know anything about placement, either. It's where you place your voice, singing in your mouth and not back in your throat, you see. That seems like a silly thing to take lessons for. Well, some people never can learn it. It's very hard for me. But you do it without even trying. I do? Yes. What's praising? Every time a person goes to Europe, he comes back with a lot of foreign notions. I always say, if you want to sing, sing. If you don't, play the piano. I guess if you just pump up that tire, you'll be doing all that's expected of you. <laughs> I'll pump the organ for you, don't I? You probably haven't even looked at that solo she wants you to sing. Sure I have. I learned it by heart. Of course, I didn't have anyone to play the piano for me. Well, we could stay after choir practice tonight. All right. Hey, that's Arlington's super dreadnought. If they're coming in, I'm going. Give me my machine. Oh, don't go, Martha. Well, you probably think I don't even know what Hallie Arlington's up to. She's got her cap all set to marry you. Oh, now, say, Martha, what would she want to marry me for? I don't know, I'm sure. I bet her parents are relieved having her run after you after some of the specimens she's run after. Now you'll want a bicycle, I suppose. Oh, no, I wouldn't think of riding one of the common things. You probably couldn't learn, dear. It's pretty simple, but of course. Hello, hello sir. Well, hello, Steve. Martha, I didn't recognize you in that outlandish. Oh, well, it isn't even a skirt. No, it's bloomers. Mm. Goodbye. Goodbye, Martha. Uh, isn't that almost immoral? I mean, aren't there laws? As a matter of fact, there are. It's illegal for a girl to wear pantaloons. Will she be arrested? She ought to be. The sheriff might see her going up the street. Hey? Yes. He might. You don't lose your taste for legs by being a sheriff. 
Oh, what did you say? Me? Nothing, ma'am. I didn't say nothing. Tell you why I came by here, Steve. There's no use beating around the bush. That expert who looked over your automobile uh, made a very interesting report. Very interesting. He says, for a young man, you've done a most unusual job. <laughs> Yes, it's much prettier than our car. Oh, no, I just put this together out of odds and ends. What I wanted to ask was, is it patented? Oh, no, I, I, I just oh. built this to ride around in. <laughs> just for fun. I mean, no use trying to patent it. Anyway, that would cost a lot of money. Yeah, it should be done, though. Well, to tell you the truth, it isn't really original. I, I read about the engine in the papers. Well, I don't want to overpraise it, but that expert said it had some remarkable features. The way the valve set, uh, for example, yeah. and the way it started, he said that's unique. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's just a strap around the drive shaft is all that is. I wonder if you'd start it for us. Oh, yes, Stephen, please do. All right. It's a kind of a non-crank thing is what it is. See, I'll, I'll just... <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Will it go? Uh, well, it has its balky days. <sighs> a lot of noise when it does, so you better brace yourself. It burns gasoline? Ah, that's right, sir. Disappointed if it doesn't go. Looks like one of its bad days. Oh, oh, oh. I'm all right, it didn't hit me. No, it won't hurt you. All right, this time. I wonder if that thing's safe. With him in this, he can spit it out of four feet clover. He can do anything with it. Did you know much about it? I helped him build it. Why did he put the valve on the top? Saves 14 moving parts setting it there. How'd you like a little job over in the carriage factory? Me? Well, I'm better off here. <laughs> he can't pay you much. I like it here. I see. Oh. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big picnic. I know where you're going. Oh. Fourth of July. Of course. <laughs> oh, I'll make up a specially good basket if you'll carry it for me. <laughs> well, I'll see which one is heaviest. <laughs> well, I'll Can't put bricks in mine. Oh. Well, I'll tell you, Steve. No use beating around the bush. Uh -huh. Just for the fun of it, I'd like to buy this machine just as she stands. Including all future rights, patents, and so on. You're welcome to use it whenever you like. No, I'd like to buy it. <laughs> well, it's not much to buy. <laughs> I'll give you 500. 500 for this? Is it a fair price? Fair? It's robbery. Hell, I wouldn't want to go any higher. No, I mean, I'd be robbing you. I'll take a chance. Well, gosh, I don't really want to sell it. I mean, it's a lot of fun just having well, it around. I just made an offer, that's all. Take it or leave it. I suppose I'd be crazy not to take it. I'll think it over if you want to. No. I'll take 500. Good. Call it done. And I hope this isn't the last business we do either. In fact, uh, I'll give you a chance to put that 500 right back into my carriage factory with me, if you like. Start earning for you from the word go. Oh, only not if you'd rather do something else, mind you. You do just as you please. Yes, sir. Hallie there's taken quite a fancy to you. <laughs> Maybe you two could uh, hit it off together, and we could sort of make a little combine. I wouldn't mind that a bit. Yes, sir. Well, Papa, what are you talking about? <laughs> just trouble to come, that's all. <clears throat> yeah, no harm in a man looking ahead and anticipating his grandchildren. She doesn't have them with one, she'll have them with another, and it might just as well be a good one. As a matter of fact, Steve, I wouldn't advise you to sell that car unless we could uh, work out a sort of a combination. Yes, sir. Yep, come on, puss. The boiler's blowing off. Hmm. Uh, now, tomorrow's the fourth. I'll see you on the fifth. Yes, sir. We'll fix it all up. Au revoir. Goodbye, Holly. 
eat and see it go. Oh, we can build another one and make it better, Hannes. This is a hell of a morning, Hannes. I didn't like it the first time, and I don't like it now. Let's move on a little, huh? Oh, okay. And uh, Stephen, next time you throw the switch, well, we should pick some time before we ate instead of after we ate. I hate to be so full of food and not even know where I got it. <laughs> you know what I ought to do, Hannes? No. I ought to hook up with Hallie and put the money in her father's business, just like he said. You won't do it, though. Yes, I will. I will, Hannes. I'll do it. But if I don't, push me a little, will you? Jog me if I need it. Yeah, OK. I think I can do it. Stephen, did it ever occur to you that maybe next time we start out on a new direction and get separated and maybe I'm not Maybe I wouldn't see so much of you next time. As long as I got a half a dollar, you got 50 cents, Hannes. Not that you're worth it. No, but it's nice to know. Hannes! Martha said something about choir practice. Well, I guess it wouldn't do any harm to see her once more. Come on, Hannes, let's go. Mm -hmm. Martha. I have no criticism of your playing. I, I, I might only suggest that it would be as well to omit some of the deep pedal notes, which, well, they require a rather unladylike extension of the lower limbs. But I love the low notes on the pedal. I know, dear. But one occasionally sacrifices art to what one might call the decencies. <laughs> now, I hesitated to speak of this, but there are men in every congregation who might be distracted by the vision of feminine proportions in more or less athletic attitudes. Now, the playing of the pipe organ requires the use of the feet. But a lady of refinement will instinctively confine herself to the middle register, easily accessible without a, without, without. She means without spreading the legs apart. <laughs> you may close the drapery, Hannes. Yes, ma'am. Easily, easily accessible, as I say, without extravagant motion under the skirt. I could wear my bicycle blues. <laughs> that will do, Martha. Now, you must accept my criticism seriously and in the spirit in which it is given, or I shall refuse to continue longer in my position as the... Now it's growing late, and we have one more hymn to prepare for the evening service. Oh, and also Mr. Minch's solo. What number, please? Turn to 172 in the victory songs.
Very, very moving. There's nothing so affecting as a delicate nuance of tone. It's a thing for you all to remember. And now, oh dear, I must be at the foreign missions meeting before nine. I fear I'll have to omit the solo after all. Oh, but it is vexing. Well, I could stay and play for Mr. Minch. Oh, well, not without proper chaperoning, of course. I fear it's out of the question. I'm here. <laughs> we may close the drapery, Hans. Yes, ma'am. Your presence would hardly suffice. <clears throat> no, no, we'll dismiss now. Oh. Oh, but maybe if uh, Mr. Duffy and Miss Arlington could remain. Oh, yes. Yes, of course, Mrs. Rutledge. Won't we tell you? Oh, yeah, sure, Ellie. The janitor's out there. And if you knew how hot it was in this coffin, you'd let me lead the uh, lid off. <laughs> Will you be quiet and draw the drapery too? Yes, ma'am. But you have no sense of propriety. I suffer through every service in this church. I suffer in terror, lest you lose control and reveal yourself. A veritable gargoyle, <laughs> staring out at the congregation from the bowels of the instrument. That's not a nice word. <laughs> now you take it upon yourself to correct me. No, we'll dismiss now. <laughs> We could stay, Mrs. Rutherford. I'd like to stay. And Mr. Minch and I haven't the least interest in each other, have we, Stephen? No. Oh, no. It isn't that I don't trust you implicitly, Martha. But it, it's just that there are certain civilized usages. However, in this case, I shall instruct the janitor to close the church doors within half an hour. I shall be deeply grateful. Deeply grateful. If some one of you will convey my displeasure to <clears throat> Master Hannes and tell him he will not be expected to join us on our picnic tomorrow, nor in any of the future merrymakings, <laughs> until he can take an entirely different attitude. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Riker. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good Lord. Now, how's she had it coming? Mm. Stephen, how can you encourage such action? She picks on him all the time. But how can you? I thought maybe I could see you home, Mark. Oh, you'd have to wait half an hour. Don't bother, Paul. Oh, I'll wait. Well, there's no need to. Stephen will see me home. Well, in that case. Who's going to Schwitz for ice cream? Oh, I'd like to. Yeah, me too. Come in. All right, come on. We'll see you in half an hour. Yeah, I'll see you at Schwitz. Bye. Yeah, bye. See you later, all you uh, cuckoos. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 I understand you're giving up bicycles and uh, coming on over the carriage back there. I might. I bet Allie fixed that up, huh? I did not. Hey, do I have to wait around here while the bicycle man makes noises like the Holy City? There won't be any pleasure having you here, Duffy. Well, it'll be a punishment to me. Oh, let's stay, Charlie. Mrs. Rutledge will be furious if we don't. Well, she'll never know. Well, I want to hear Stevie say. Well, I don't. Can you blame me? We'll come over for ice cream afterward. Will you, Stevie? Sure, just as soon as this is through. All right. <laughs> Don't you let her keep you now. Charlie, you have to wait for me. Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you'd rather have somebody else play for you. What's the matter, Martha? Oh, where's your music? Tell him to pump. Give her air, Hannes. Yep. I don't know it very well. I just picked it out with one finger. Well, some people just sing, you know. They don't have to have instructions. They just sing like birds. Don't you want to play for me, Mom? You come in right here. And I'll... I'll play the prelude. Last night I lay asleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. 
I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, methought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. Methought the Change the streets no longer rang. Hushed were the glad hosannas, the little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chill. As the shadow of a cross appeared upon a lonely hill, as the shadow. does something to you so that, I don't know, so you want more music, only so much greater. Do you feel that too? Well, right now I do. Oh, I thought nobody felt that except me, mm. only I could never say it so well. Oh, I never say anything well. Uh, wouldn't it be wonderful? If we could be great people and and sing somewhere and I could play for you, I can just imagine. It would be marvelous. Mm. Only um, there's nobody here who kn knows enough to teach us, so it, it would have to be somewhere where people love music. I mean, where a whole nation loves music. Well, Not here. Mrs. Rutledge knows, doesn't she? No, she really doesn't. She's kind of a fake, isn't she? Maybe she is. No, I don't think it's fair to say that. I mean, she does the best she can. I guess an old maid never could be much, huh? Well, she's not an old maid. She's a widow. Well, she acts like an old maid. <laughs> Maybe she does act like one. <laughs> Martha, you're marvelous. No, I'm not. And I don't like to hear you say that. Uh, silly. And all I know is what I learned in high school, and I'll probably never get any farther. Well, I think you're marvelous. Why don't you like to hear me say it? Because... I got a glimpse of something in the music that was better than somebody saying you're marvelous and wanting to kiss you. I want to love someone who's much too good for me. And someone like that would never love me, but that's why I'd love him. 
Who is it, Martha? Nobody I ever saw. But sometime you might be like that. I wonder if I could be. Do you have the feeling we've said all this before? Yes. Maybe we did. <laughs> Way back when the Earth wasn't the same and the North Star wasn't even the North Star at all. You mean like the poem, when you were a queen and I was a slave? No, I wouldn't want you to be a slave. <laughs> no, don't touch me, please. It makes me feel as if you're like the others and... Well, maybe I am. I guess so. Yes, I am too. Only tonight, I like to think that, just for tonight, that there's something we can have that's like the music, nobler than we are. Yeah, I know. Do you mind if I play some more and see if it'll come back? No, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> of the young gentleman as well. Yeah. <laughs> Hell! <laughs> Miss Arlington! A lady does not put her hand into a gentleman's pocket. Oh, no. For any purpose. Well, I was taking a piece of candy. <laughs> if Mr. Nietzsche wishes to offer you candy, he will do so. But he wouldn't give me any. But if I wanted it, I could help myself. Oh. Stephen? Yes, ma'am. Is that cooperation? Uh, no, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> she, she just wanted to put her hand in his pocket. That's all she wanted. Hannes, be quiet. Yes, ma'am, but what do you think a fella carries candy for except for bait? <laughs> for what? <laughs> Nothing, ma'am. He <laughs> said for bait. Shut up. Master Hannes was not invited to this outing. <clears throat> he is here on sufferance only. The less attention paid to him, the better. He's crazy. I'm oh, crazy. No. Shall we all spread our cloth near the rock as usual? Always remembering that I must keep you all within sight at all times. <laughs> the ladies will understand my reason for that request and will obey implicitly, I am sure. I am responsible to your parents. Uh, Martha, Della, if you'd help me for a moment. 
Me. Oh, don't worry about him. He's just jealous. Well, you ought to go home anyway. You weren't invited. Jealous can stay. No. <laughs> well, you always have him around. <laughs> oh, sometimes he's useful. You think more of him than you do of me, don't you? It's different. Mm. <laughs> what did you do that for? <laughs> what are we going to do after lunch? Uh, Mrs. Butler says something about playing sax to the mill and farmer in the dell. Oh, let's all go down under the ledge. What good is that? She won't know where we are. Oh. Would you go, Charlie? Sure, I'm game. That's better than sacks to the mill. Would you, Christabel? Well, we really shouldn't, Hallie. Oh, I know, but it's just for fun. Oh, please, Steve. Pretty, pretty. All right. And afterwards, we can slip away and go swimming. Hmm? Oh, Hallie. What? It's oceans of fun to go swimming. Take her out and drown her. <laughs> 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 Oh, it's not very nice of you boys not to do what we girls want to do when we're on a picnic, is it, Christabel? Well, if, if they don't want to... Well, if they don't want to, we'll just find somebody else. I brought a towel. Where is it? It's in my basket. You, can... <laughs> you are a... <laughs> you could sneak it out when she isn't looking. Sally, you're a hellbender. <laughs> well, I wouldn't do it with just anybody, but I would with you. Come on, Christabel, oh. so you'll get wet. Well... I never did such a thing. Oh, so what? Well, if Hallie does. Oh, come on, it's oceans of fun. Won't well, that old hand be viewing? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. oh. Come on over here, this side. Oh. oh, I brought something for you. Oh, thanks, Martha. Want to sit with us? Yeah, I guess so. Come on. Oh. Isn't it a heavenly day? I've noticed it's getting a little hot, isn't it? Isn't it getting a little crowded here? No, you're all right. I wish it would rain. Oh, listen to Hannah's wishing it would rain. That's his idea of a picnic. <laughs> I like rain. Can't you get it in your head a fellow might like rain, same as you like this darn hot weather? Well, it is warm, but then it's July. You could open the top button of, of your shirt. Gee, it's... Just the kind of a day to go swimming, isn't it? Boys have most of the fun, don't they? Why? Well, you can go swimming and everything. You can't girls swim? Well, I guess they could. Did Pally ask you to go swimming? Maybe. How did you know? She always does. Why did you carry her basket? Because she asked me to. Didn't I tell you? What do you got? Oh, Charlie, I was looking everywhere for you. This is very good, Charlie. It's a uh, pate de foie gras. Oh, yeah, that is? Hmm? Looks like chicken liver to me. You say the most delightful thing is Charlie. And I brought it for you. Well, thanks. Hey, maybe if I uh, put two of these together, they might uh, mount to something, huh? A big, strong man like you ought to eat more than a girl. Well, I keep up my strength, don't worry. Oh, I just love to see men eat. You know, putting away great portions of red meat and pounds and pounds of things. I could just sit and watch them and think how extraordinary they are. Oh, yeah? Mm. In that case, sir, I can give you a good time every day. No charge at all. This is women's food. That's why I always say, Charlie. Sandwich is just women's food. You got the towel? The towel's in the basket? Come on, let's go down on the ledge. Well, I gotta finish my sandwich. Well, you can finish it down there. Okay. Don't forget, Stevie. Hallie, what? are you sure no one's gonna see you? No, 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 yes, don't be such a... Come on. It's a free country, you know. What does that mean? If you want to see how she looks in the completely, now's your time. 
Oh, Charlie, the things you think of to say, John. I can live without. You'd be the first one who ever refused. Well, that's something. Do you think I'm catty, Steve? I mean, just vilely catty? I never noticed. Oh, I am, though. I can't bear it, and I won't. Why should I care whether you like me or not? Why does a girl have to care whether anybody likes her or not? It's disgusting to care. It's a curse. We carry it with us everywhere like the curse of Eve. And there shouldn't be men and women. Oh, there should just be people. Martha, I've never heard you talk like this before. You're a man you wouldn't understand. Where are you going? Anywhere. Nowhere. Don't come with me unless you really want to. I won't play games for anybody. It's not worth it. Martha! Martha! Steve! Steven. What? Where are you going? I'm just going with Martha. It's no use, Hannes. I can't do it alone. I'm going right ahead and marry Martha again. She'll hate me for it all over again. Oh, well, that's the way it is. Now, that's the way it is. But we came back here to get another chance. We can't go all through it again. But I'm falling for her again. I'm in love with her all over again, and I just can't quit. What do you want me to do? You better fix the machine, Hannes. Don't spoil it too much. Just, just fix it so it doesn't work for a couple minutes. Yeah, I guess I could do it. Just lift the wire off the wheel. Don't, don't break it or anything. Just lift it off and then put it back on again. I'll go back to bicycle shop now? Yeah. Then you better find me and tell me. All right, Steve. Martha! 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 No such thing as honor among young people anymore. <laughs> well, it's the whole world changing so that there's no principle left. So the girls don't care what's said about them or what they do. Oh, Pally. Martha. <laughs> See, they just went by themselves a spoon. <laughs> they don't like people to look at them when they're spooning. <laughs> Speak up a person. You're the only one left here to tell me. Oh, I shall die of shame and rage. What use am I? What good am I in the world? When I wanted to be so kind to them, they have so little respect for me. I want to die and be out of it. I want to die and be out of it all. Alone in the world. Nothing but these nasty children. Why, Mrs. Rutledge? Don't call me Mrs. Rutledge. I'm human as much as they are. And they've no right. Oh, I want to die. What good am I? Gee, I'm sorry. I don't hate you, Hannah. Hmm. I don't hate anybody. Just that you say such unspeakable things. 
Hmm. I'm so alone. Would you stay here with me? So it won't be so embarrassing if somebody comes. Would you please? Me? Never mind. I got to uh, go back to the uh, bicycle shop. Very well, Hannes. I'll tell them myself. Martha? Stephen? She seemed excited. I know, but we're not children at all. <laughs> Stephen! I want you here. Then I won't answer anything but a fire alarm. <laughs> Go! <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Are you glad you sold the automobile? Sure. Why? Well, now I'll have some money for the shop. You know, when I have a real place, I got some ideas. Things I want to make. Automobiles? I don't know, different things. I thought maybe you might think of going in with Mr. Arlington. I don't know. Let me put my coat under your head. Would you? Sure. Oh. You want to talk about music? If you do. I don't know enough. Gosh, you're lovely. Leaning back like that. Stephen. You know, a girl who tries to be good is always at a disadvantage. Why? I never let anybody kiss me except in games. Some girls let you kiss them, don't they? Well, I wouldn't expect it of you. I mean, I wouldn't... Why? I just wouldn't dare. I mean... I mean, it was right what you said the other day. But, well, not... Not wanting to be just like the others. Wanting something better. But... And today, I... I wouldn't mind at all. You mean... If I touched you? I thought you'd be angry. Oh. Some days, a girl wants just that, only she doesn't dare to tell you, you see. Oh, gosh. Oh. You're sweeter than honeysuckle. Oh, my, that's sweet. But it's terrible and tragic, too. Is it? Mm. Because we're all alone in this world, and so many things can happen, but... when you kiss me, only one thing can happen. And if it's a mistake, there's never any way out, you see. It wouldn't be a mistake. <laughs> Men are so sure. Well, it's like a man to be sure, but a girl... She sees so many things that can happen, and she just has this one life, and... Sometimes she's tired and lonely and... and hungry. 
hungry for something to happen. She might let the wrong person kiss her, and, and then she's a slave to whatever he wants to do all her life long. Do you think I might be the wrong person? Oh, Stephen. Would you always be good to me? Always. But you don't know. I mean, none of us knows what we'll be. I know I'd always be good to you. <laughs> Men are so sure. Can I kiss you again? Oh, yes. nothing we can do. There's no use trying to be wise. You mean we have to just fall in love and take the consequences? <laughs> take our medicine? Poor Stephen. Is it really as bad as all that? It's what I want. That's all I know. It's all I want. Oh. You say the most blundering, stupid things, and then you say just the right thing. <laughs> Poor Stephen. You never know which is which, do you? Well, anyway, I have the 500 now, and we can get married. But you needed that to put in the shop. Only a little of it. Stephen? I don't want to spoil your chances. My chances, Martha? I'm going to be a great man. And I won't make it more difficult. you make it possible. Mm -hmm. I don't care about a lot of money. I only care about the things I want to do. Inventions and mathematics and machines. I won't make it. But if you don't care about the money, they'll always take it away from you. Well, maybe they will. But they can't take away the things I can make. I don't want to put any money in Arlington's business. I'd rather you had some furniture for our house. You mean we can start out with real? Silver and real linen? Real everything. Especially you and me. Oh. We will then. And I'll make an end of being afraid. Oh, Stephen. You're the one. You always have been. God knows you're the one. You always will be. I kept myself for you, Stephen. Just for you. I know everybody says I'm a prude and a blue stocking and... Oh, but now it's all decided. I can even go swimming with you. And I won't care if you see me. I'll be proud. Oh. Let's go, then. Let's slip away and go. Stephen. Over and over again, I have the strangest feeling. Haven't we sat here before and said all these things? Have we? Every word of it, just as we did now. Looks as though it's going to storm. <laughs> Hannes was wishing it would rain. I've never seen it so dark before in the middle of the day. Almost as though somebody put out the light. Must be... Hannes, fixing the machine. Stephen. I know you think a lot of him, but don't get him mixed up with the creator. Yes, Hannah's got back to the shop. He won't get wet then, will he? Even if we do. Evie! Evie, aren't you coming? That's Hallie. Perhaps she can wait. Yes, it's Hallie. Stephen? What is it? I'm frightened. What is this darkness? Martha, I don't want to go. I want to stay here and tell you I love you. But I asked Hannes to fix it so we'd be happier. So you wouldn't be so terribly unhappy and I wouldn't. Stephen? Yes? What are you saying? I love you, Stephen. It's better. Well, I'm it'll be better for both of us. Stevie! Stevie! I have to go now, Martha. That's part of it. I'm frightened. Your face is hidden. I... I'm frightened. You know that it happens, Martha. Stevie! 
Yes, I'm coming. Stephen! Darling Stephen! Somebody! Hurry! I think he's drowning. Get out of the way. Oh, I'll never forgive myself. Never. You'll be all right, Steve. Got to be. Where am I, then? I was going toward the river, and I seemed to fall forward, stepped into cloud. This is nowhere, I'd say. Nowhere at all. Once when I was sick, you came and brought your kettle and your herbs, brewed medicine for me on the fire. And then you sat with me all night. And I'd have died, my mother said, only for you. Don't you remember? You were a pretty boy. <laughs> you were a goner. Hadn't been for me and my old basket. Goner. I don't see very well today what I see. I don't care for. Tell me how to get back to the picnic. So that's it. Lost from his picnic, wanting to get back. Nothing we do but picnics when we're young. Picnics and boys and girls. Ribbons and trousers, that's what it is. Leave it to yourself. I'll find it alone. So hot, my little man. Why? You'll follow a ribbon far enough. Back through the stars and forward through your own time. Until you come back to the land's end. When you have one, you must have Donna. And when you have Donna to kiss, she's not the one. How do you know? But bye. And wait. Your own will come to you. What a man asks, that he shall have. And the bitter shall be sweet upon your tongue. And the sweet be bitter. What you ask, you shall have. That's your punishment, along with your reward. Show me my way. Forth from this place, a myriad ways go out, like the rays of a candle in the night. And you shall try them all and never rest, but you shall return and walk them all and never done. But try again, path by path, numberless paths forever, each a dream. Where are you going now? What do you wish for? Never mind what I wished. I can tell your fortune. I don't want it. Give me your hand. Tell it. Destiny. Your destinies, 
your shadow on the path, falling before you where you want to go. And where are you going now? Back to find Halley. Not that I want to, but I have to. <laughs> Then that's your destiny. I, you shall have your Halley. Be wary what you wish for when you're young, or you'll get it when you're old. Still, it's no matter. For while you like, you'll have your try again. Coming to many ways and choosing one, you'll learn to choose another. Though all you learn is it takes more than a palace to make a king. And there's many a king with no palace. How do I get back? Where am I now? This is no place. What's happened here has never happened before. It's happening now. Can't be. Yet it's more real than all that's happened. Your heart, that's a beautiful answer. That's a honey. There's Hannah's. Ask it of him. Hannes! Out of him. He's coming too. Is he gonna live? Huh? Is he? Yes. Yes. I didn't mean to You're do right. it. Well, you did it. Uh, come over here. Hold no. his head. No, I'm afraid he's dead. Oh, no, he's not dead, you crawfish. No thanks to you. Oh. Get over here! All right. All right. Got him. Don't let go. All right. I got a bottle over there. Carry liquor. Shut up. Oh, God. Oh, he's alive. He's alive. Oh. Martha? No. No, it's me. It's Holly. Holly? Oh. oh. Down by the pool. I must have. Yeah. What happened? You fell in. I pushed you backwards. Oh. Uh. Gonna... I must have hit my head on the rock. Well, I didn't mean to do it, Steve. Oh. Oh, he's gonna be alive, Alice. <laughs> I didn't want to go swimming, and I oh. I thought if you got all wet, you'd have to. I got all wet, all right, inside and out. Steve. Oh. 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 Stay back. What was it? Fire water. Oh, give me the rest of it I need. Oh. oh, that's better now. If it only stays where I put it. Oh, I'm getting you all wet. Oh, I hope nobody comes. Why? Oh, I look a sight. Don't look at me. Oh, you look fine. At least you're warm. Oh, you cold beast. Now I'll have to marry you, won't I? Hmm? Why? For what I did. Yeah, I guess you will. You couldn't do worse. Oh, you mean it, Stephen? Sure. Oh, you darling. Do you mind? I've been drinking. No, I love it. I'm getting out of here. You bring me my shoes and stockings, Hannes. Why not? I always have to wait on his women. Oh, why did you run away from me all afternoon? I didn't. Yes, you did. 
Looks like you had to be hit over the head before you could like me, doesn't it? Well, let's make it the last time. Mm. How did I get here? Hannah's carried you. <coughs> Good old Hannah. <coughs> he always rescues me. Yeah, what do you mean? He's rescued you before. Yeah. All the same, when he was a different girl that time. Oh, what are you talking about? I don't know. Oh, maybe it'll all turn out the way Papa said. Yeah, maybe it will this time. You happy? Huh? Yes. I'm dreaming now of Hallie, sweet Hallie, sweet Hallie. <coughs> I'm dreaming now of Hallie, for the thought of her is one that never dies. She's sleeping oh. in the valley, the valley, the valley. She's sleeping in the valley. And the mockingbird is singing where she lies. Oh, I don't know what you think's so funny. She's sleeping in the valley, the valley, the valley. She's sleeping in the valley. And the mockingbird is singing where she lies. <laughs> <laughs> and now something dulcet, something really dulcet and tender. Listen to the mockingbird. Cuckoo! Listen to the mockingbird. The mockingbird is singing o'er her grave. Listen to the mockingbird. Listen to the mockingbird. Still singing with a wind with a Tomorrow evening, nothing preventing. Bring the little red hymnals, and we'll all. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I must rush. I'm so sorry. Four initials. Four initials. Uh, you little ladies, remember in my absence, propriety, please. Oh, I'm glad you think it's amusing. I don't. I'd heard, I've heard it too often. I shall remember this, Mr. Duffy. So this is where you all have been, within easy distance of my car. Hallie. Have you been in swimming? Well, you have. Oh, what if I have? He fell in and she pulled him out. Oh, very likely. Hannah, what are you doing with Hallie's shoes and stockings? This always happens to me, every time. Oh, well, I'm quite grateful to you. You bring in exactly the evidence I need. If you mean have I been in swimming with Stephen, yes, I have, and I don't care. Oh, Hallie. No, no I don't care, because we're going to be married, Stephen and I. What? Married? You and Stephen? Oh, but that makes it all so different. Oh, my dear children, what a beautiful day this has been. And with such a perfect ending. Oh, let me embrace you both. Mm. Oh, but Stephen, you're wet. You're clothes. Yeah, I fell in all right, but it was Hannah's pulled me out. Hannah's? Oh, why, Hannah? Why didn't you tell me? You've been a hero. Oh, no, it wasn't nothing. I just reached in and pulled him by the hair. Stephen! <laughs> they said you drowned. No, not quite. I'm, I'm fine now. Where were you? I looked for you everywhere. Why, Martha, didn't you know? Steve and Hallie are going to be married. You and Annette? Yes. How... Isn't it marvelous? <laughs> Is that true, St Steve? <laughs> yes, Martha. Was it all a mistake, what we said? What yes, Martha. <gasps> oh, yes, it's marvelous. I... I must have sounded so tragic. We came rushing in here to the rescue, and it's a, a wedding announcement. I, I hope you'll be very happy. Oh, you mustn't mind too much, Martha. It just had to happen. Stephen and I love each other so much. Oh, yes, I can see that. I don't mind at all. It makes it all so simple. Now, shall we all give them a few moments to make themselves more presentable? Please. <laughs> Hannes, give me the shoes and stockings. <laughs> Hallie, if yes. you don't mind, we'll find a covert where you can make yourself more presentable. Come along. All right. Huh. 
So it was all back here, huh? Just like we thought it was. Yeah. Everything that ever happened is still back here happening all the time. And everything that's gonna happen? I don't know what's gonna happen, Hannes. Steve. What are we gonna do now? I don't know, Hannes. I don't know. We're going in a different direction now. We came all the way back to the depot and took another train. But, well, it seems like we don't learn much from experience, do we? Why, why do you say so? I still want Martha. The worst way. Don't you want to be rich? I'm not thinking about that part of it. Well, I am. What are you thinking about? Hmm? I'm thinking about why we came back here, Hannes. Mm -hmm. Martha was sorry she married me. Mm -hmm. And now she won't have to. get us in these monkey suits. Dress us up, look like a bunch of movie ushers and drive us past a grandstand full of butlers in formation. Every woman holding the reins to her own gelding. Ah, I couldn't stand it. So I left home. Not much home to leave either with that anthem croaking old prissy hiding my tobacco behind the toilet seat. What there was of it, I left. <laughs> oh, it looks awfully difficult before you do it. But after you do it, you wouldn't go back for money. Are you going to come with you with us now, Hannes? Am I invited? <laughs> Not by Hallie, no. <laughs> Personally, I wouldn't want to send you back to Mrs. Rutledge. I never should have married her, Stephen. I never should have married anybody. Uh, We're not eating at home tonight, Hannah, so you got the whole place to yourself. Well, then this damn thing comes off and that butler of yours can choke to death looking at my animal's apple. <laughs> butler of yours never should have gone through Harvard. 
Every time he looks at me, he suffers concussion of the brain. <laughs> Hannes, yeah. I got something I want to tell you about. I'm waiting. I'm all braced and waiting. You haven't got a chance, Hannes. You don't give yourself a chance. Oh, what's it all about? More about the way I dress and my general deportment. You know, uh, you weren't born in one of these things yourself, Stephen. <laughs> I've seen you bear. You're as human as I am. Ah, oh, hell, I remember you when you were honest. Forget it, Hans. What is it, Stephen? The hell with it. You know, I go quite a distance for you, Stephen. Further than you go for me, probably. back on again. Oh, no, that isn't it. It's, it's nothing. Nothing I can do. Okay. Hmm. the women into sleeping with the wrong men. Will you turn off the record and stop bleeding around here like a stuck pig? You think I like the place any better than you do? Huh? Or the clothes I wear, or the company I keep? I haven't been in the laboratory for ten years. Ten years. I'm sitting in an office trying to think of some way to cheat somebody out of their money. And all you can do is think of how to make it harder for me. Don't I try to make it easier for you? Huh? Don't I? Don't I try to teach you how to fit in and play the game? But if you won't learn, you won't learn. Maybe I'm too dumb to learn. Hannes, his dinner's ready, and he can eat it any time. You don't want me out of the room any faster than I want to go. This can't go on, you know. What? Hannah's staying here. Who said it could? Well, he's here. Here and he drives me insane, completely insane. His room's a sty, he never changes his clothes. And he insults me every time I see him. And he takes it for granted that he has as much right in this house as I have. When it comes to value received, maybe he has. Oh, what does that mean? Anything you want. You've been drinking. Well, you'll be drinking in a few minutes. That's cheap. We're all cheap around here, the whole gang of us. Except maybe Hannes. Oh, well. Well, well, I warn you, I won't put up with Hannes much longer. Well, you may not have to. Put up with Hannes much longer. 
I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I forgot to tell you. You won't have to pick me up at the Milton dinner. Because Mr. Duffy will be there. Well, if you're going to sleep over at the club, why don't you pack a few street clothes to take along? Makes the neighbors talk when you come home wearing an evening dress around noon. Oh, I have a perfect right to sleep at the club. So is my friend Charlie Duffy. And you have a right under the Constitution to be a tramp. Oh, I'm not a tramp. If I can find a little consideration and a little feeling for beauty away from this place, I'll take it. Well, that's what I said. If you can find a little consideration and feeling for beauty away from this place, you have a right to go after it. Yes. And when it comes to Charlie, he certainly goes around feeling for beauty right and left, doesn't he? I don't know why I live with you. You don't. No. But I can tell you why you don't divorce me. Oh, well, I've wondered for a long, long while. It's because you're afraid the alimony won't be as much as your present allowance. <laughs> Duffy wouldn't marry you any more than I would again. Well, maybe I know more about that than you do. Well, I hope you do. Talk in, folks. I enter the palace of Stephen Mitch. And behold, our guzzling host and his fair consort. <laughs> what, no butler? Mr. and Mrs. Paul Ryger of West Terrace, Ragged, Ohio. Mr. Charles Duffy. Pirate, unattached. Slightly swift, but able to drive. <laughs> Sorry to be late, Hallie, but the terrific was terrific, as they say in New York. God, aren't you beautiful? I'd like my new tails. Oh, they're gorgeous. Give me a drink. Hello, Steve. Hello, Paul. Hello, Martha. Hello, Steve. Where's Hannes? Having his dinner. We gotta get it over with tonight, you All right, we'll get it over with tonight. You girls go on upstairs. I don't know why. Something disreputable, no doubt. What do I get for going upstairs? Diamonds, darling. Pearls and rubies and also affection. Hannes is being fired. I want to watch. Well, he is. From what? We turned over part of that holding company to him, you know, to avoid income tax. And now we got it all fixed up to do some merry-go-round with the stock, and he won't play ball. But he won't turn over the stocks? Well, that's dishonest. Yeah, I'll say it's dishonest. Why do you need him? Because we haven't got a majority without him. It looks as though Master Hannes is in control of the situation. Uh, that's he? what he thinks. Why isn't he? Well, uh, never mind why, only he isn't. I thought his old woman was coming over. She is. Coming here? Oh, now, Charlie. Had to happen. She ought to be here now. Call him in, will you, Stephen? You were very smart to trust Hannes. Oh, he's no thief, you know. Just a plain fool. Now listen, Hannes, we're asking you to do only one thing. That's to vote your stock for the reorganization. That's all we want. You don't get it. Well, what's in the other pocket? Rabbits? You don't get it. <clears throat> uh-huh. Well, I tell you what we're gonna do. You're crazy. You've been crazy ever since the first time I saw you. We're going to have you declared crazy and have you put away and let your wife vote the stock for you. You can't do it. I got an alienation officer who says I can. He's waiting right outside. That's your wife now. Come in, Mrs. Wicks. Hannes is right here. Hannes, you've been cruel leaving me without a word. 
Oh, he's been terribly cruel to me. He's crazy. Yes, I think he is. I honestly think he is. Would you uh, swear to that? Well, it seems I would have to, doesn't it? Doesn't it seem as if I'd have to? Yes, if you want the stock in your name, you'd have to. Oh, yes, indeed. I think I would. Look, Charlie, I don't mind cheating the government. Uh, that's why you put the stock in my name, and everybody knows that. But when it comes to wrecking the holding company, so you can clean out the investors and swipe the whole kit and caboodle for yourself, I can't figure it. It's a dirty steal of 20 million dollars from people who can't afford it. And I'm not voting. Now look, here's something you might consider. You can keep the stock. Take it as a gift, only vote our way this once. I don't want it, Charlie. What are you so hot about reorganizing for anyway? You don't need that 20 million. As a matter of fact, we do, Hans. And we pooled all our assets in that holding company. And we're gonna come out plucked if it doesn't go through. Well, maybe you'd be better off with so much money, uh, Sonny. Well, look, we're gonna get it anyway, you know. Only one way will be unpleasant for you, the other way will be on easy street. Can't do anything to me. Why not? Because Stephen won't let you. Oh, won't he? No, he won't. Oh, I think he will. Steve. Well, as a matter of fact, I won't. Now, why don't you just clear out of here, Ollie? Get the hell out of here and take your five cent alienist mm -hmm. with you, huh? How will you look when I begin to squeeze the tire company, Steve, huh? About as flat as Hannah's here, I should judge. Oh, so now it's me, huh? So now I'm tagged. Go ahead and vote their way, Hannah. I can't do it, I Stephen. I said vote the stock their way. Well, I won't. Oh, you won't, huh? Well, then you can just go ahead and sit in a padded cell for a while, huh? How do you like that? Because I wash my hands of you. Maybe you think you're a little tin Jesus being crucified. Well, just go ahead and be a tin Jesus and let him crucify you then. Doesn't make any difference anyway. The world's full of crooks and thieves. And if you want to do business and eat regular meals, you better be one of them. Now look, I can't afford to lose all this. And there's an officer out there who takes orders like a stenographer. So you just go ahead and vote their way or else. For all I know, you are crazy. <laughs> I know I am. Stephen, you put Hannes away. I'm doing it. Come on, come on, say something. We have to go to dinner with the tin plate king and his collection of titians, whatever that is. Blonde's boy. Come on, say something. Paul, have you ever read it, Dryden? I heard of him in school. Listen to this. Oh, all of a piece throughout. Thy chase had a beast in view. Thy wars brought nothing about. Thy lovers were all untrue. Tis well and old age is out, and time to begin anew. It rhymes? Yes, it rhymes. All right. Cover it any way you want. Sign the proxy, then it's all over. Are we going? Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, that's 
a very good idea. I'm staying here. Very well, I'll manage. Good night. better than all of them. Yes, you believe in something. Not anymore. Oh, Stephen, you changed. You're like the others, bitter and cruel. You've never done anything like this before. What of it? It had to be done. I can remember a time when you'd have lost everything and never given it a thought before you'd betray Hannah. It's Hannah's funeral, not mine. Well, I think it's yours. It's your funeral. It all went wrong a long time ago, Martha. When I married Hallie and not you. But that's all done and gone and it's nothing to do now. I know what I am. I'm not real. I don't like it. And you're not real. We're all a big sham. But it can't be changed. There's too much under the bridge. Why did you marry Hallie then? Because you wanted me to. I never said so. Oh, yes, you did. Don't you remember? Oh, no, you wouldn't, would you? Well, go on. Go on. It's too late now. Go on, the others are waiting for you. Just go on, will you? Go on. Anna, Sam. Martha. You're the only one I care about. Who cares about me? The rest of them would cut my throat for a quarter of one percent of practically anything. Well, Stephen, you'd do the same thing to me. I guess I would. But Where's that machine we used to have? In the garage. What kind of shape is it in? I don't know. Just uh, sitting there. It wouldn't work a couple of years ago when I tried it. Have you tried it? Yeah, I tried it. Be stuck here forever. Hey, we are stuck. Let's tinker with it. We've got to get it to work. You think you could fix it? Might as well be dead as here.
24 hours. Oh, I don't figure an hour anymore. It don't mean a thing. I still get hungry, though. <laughs> no scrap iron today. Maybe she ran out of scrap iron. Well, maybe she remembered you don't like it. Would she, uh, would she know about uh, all that that happened? I don't know. She should. She was there. Hey! Look, 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 look over where! Yeah, look over where. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well sit down. Hey, hey. I wonder where Martha is. We've been gone all night, you know. What do you mean, all night? Well, from her point of view, that's all time is, you know, the point of view. Yeah, I don't figure in, uh, in, uh, I don't figure in that kind of point of view. Uh, I figure all I know is it was 25 years, and all I can think about now is what to want for breakfast. <laughs> Where's Steven? Well, he's in there looking for you. Is he all right? He's fine. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Michael. Hi. Oh. Where were you? When? All night. Alice? Where were you? Well, uh, I'll tell you some other time. What is that thing that's out there? Well, I, 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 that's a machine we've been kind of uh, trying out. Well, I wish you had told me. Well, we didn't know, Mark. She doesn't know. Yes, yeah, she does. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, my God. What? What is it? What? <laughs> Gotta, gotta, gotta go, go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hold me down, Stephen. I'm gonna take a plate and shine right through the window. Oh, Jimmy, what <laughs> a celebration you haven't told me what. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know where you were or what you were doing, but you left me sitting here all night without a word of explanation. I suppose there were no telephones where you were. Martha. What is it? Didn't you sleep all night? No, I sat in the chair by the window. Were you wishing I'd be back? I think you stayed away just to frighten me. Martha, have you ever read any of Dryden? Your wars brought nothing about. Your lovers were all untrue. It's well the old Did day. you have the same dream? Yeah. What does it mean? It means I like it better here, Martha. And it means when you didn't like it here, it was all my fault. place you have here. Well, we, uh, how are you, Ennis? Did you speak to me? Yes, I did. I said, how are you? I'm fine. How are you, Charlie? Well, able to get around. You boys have a way of stirring me up lately. Sit down, Charlie. Uh-huh. When you can't think of anything else to do, you uh, rob the plant. Who robbed the plant? These boys. But tell me what happened, please. My watchman called me to say that a window was forced in the laboratory last night. Somebody ran a truck gangway out through a window and made off with Stevens' contraption out there. I had a pretty good idea who it was, and I didn't really give a damn. But pretty soon it turned out there was something else missing. That's all we took. Well, I can prove you took it, because there's a contraption. If you took one, you took the other. That's all we took. Now, think a minute. Nothing else? There wasn't anything else we wanted. Listen, Stephen, after you left yesterday, I had a talk with Park and, uh, what's his name? The, the fellows who were going to take over the rubber. Mm. Well, when I pinned them down to it, it turned out they didn't know much about rubber, but they did know where you kept your analysis, and those cards were missing this morning. Mm. Now, we were a little slow in the head, and you pulled a fast one. The burglar lifted them. What burglar? I mean, which burglar? Now, I need those cards. I could have you boys arrested. Now, where are they? Well, we don't know where they are. Now, just hand them back and we pass the whole thing over. Nothing said. Charlie, 
Charlie, we don't know where they are. Is that your final word? They got lost in the shuffle. You're smarter than I thought you were, Steve. I never knew you to pull anything crooked, and I didn't think you knew how. But you win. Well, there's no sense putting you boys in jail. I've got to have the dope on that tire by tomorrow afternoon. There's nowhere else I can get it. Now, when are you coming back to the lab? Well, we're fired. Well, we'll forget it. Well, there's other things I'd rather do, actually, Charlie. What is it? What? Well, you wouldn't understand. Why, there's a lot of things you wouldn't understand, Charlie. And one of them is that I'm never going to take orders again. It isn't worth it. Oh, I might do you a favor, but I like you. But you can threaten me, and I won't take orders. Well, uh, I don't know, Steve. Maybe you're bluffing and maybe you're not, but if you're bluffing, you ought to play poker. You'd be good. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the way I've run the firm. When a man's too good to lose and you can't keep him any other way, I make him a partner. Oh, I hell, you could have been a partner a long time ago, only you never made a play for it. And now a partnership carries 200 shares and an income of about uh, 17,000. Now, what do you say? Do I have to do it, Martha? Oh, no, I, I don't want him to have a partnership. Oh, Martha, what's all this about? I don't want him to be a partner. I want him just the way he is. No matter how long we have to live. But it doesn't hurt a man to be a partner. I've known it. Well, what about a salary? As a, as a consulting engineer, no regular hours, just uh, drop in on us when we're in a jam like this. But uh, nobody gives me orders? Uh, no one gives you orders. Well, how about it, Martha? I could get you a piano, then. I don't need a piano, Steve. Say, uh, 200 a week? I think you're going to have a piano, Martha. And, uh, Hannes rates 50. Uh. All right. Boy, uh, you really had me, uh, sweating there for a minute. Say, uh, you don't dislike me, do you, Steve? Dislike you? Why, Charlie, no. After all, you married Hallie, didn't you? Hey, that's right. You, you were sweet on Hallie yourself, weren't you? Yeah, well, I got over it. Yeah, you got over it. You know, you might do some more work on this uh, beads on a string, lines of light, banks of a canal idea, Stephen. There might be something in that. Well, why do you say that, Johnny? Huh? Well, as a matter of fact, I had a funny... Well, never mind. That sure was funny, though, about last night. Well, never mind. See, we'll get on better now, huh? I think we will, Charlie. I'll get my rubber formula. Don't you worry. I'm leaving it to you, Stephen. Oh, well, bye. Goodbye. So long, Hannes. So long, Charlie. Well, Martha. How's everything? Just fine. You want me to uh, live somewhere else? Do you still believe in Stephen? Yes, I do, Martha. Then I want you to live here. Martha, I guess you want us to tell you about the machine now, Oh, huh? that, yes, what is that? Well, it's, uh, it's kind of a, it's like a radio for picking up old programs. <laughs> Didn't I see that long ago? In the bicycle shop when we were young. Maybe it is, maybe it is. <clears throat> you see, we call it the star wagon, and yeah. it runs along on a thread of time. It's like a cash basket on a wire. It can go anywhere. Here, yeah. let, let, let me show you. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, but you don't have to, Hannes, not now. <laughs> let me show you. Yeah, just a little one. Like about uh, half hour ago before 
<laughs> Before Duffy was here. <laughs> What do you remember, Martha? All of it. I like the choir practice best. Mm. Oh, you are a great man. Oh, no. Yes, you are. No, if I'm a great man, there aren't any great men. That's, that's one thing I found out. But if you made more of those and people could go anywhere, back and forth, it changes the whole world. No, it doesn't. No, that's another thing I found out. Wouldn't change the world. Nothing changes the world. All these new things we find, they just make it a little more mysterious and maybe a little more terrible. But the people would change. You think so? Mm. I don't. I don't think they'd change at all. I think they'd take it for granted after a while and then they'd just go on being the same. All these new inventions, they come along and we think the whole world is going to be different. But after a little while, they're, they're on the market, you know, for a dollar down, two dollars a week, and people just go on being the same. That machine, that's just a better way of remembering things, that's all, that's all. I don't know if that'll make us any wiser. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. <laughs> maybe wiser. Yeah. I don't want to go anywhere again, though. Hmm. And I don't want to change anything. Except, let's... Get a piano. <laughs> yes, and sing sometimes. I don't know if I could anymore. Mark. It'll all come back to you when I play yeah. for you. I know it will. You think so? Yes. <laughs> find it the way we live. Our lives are like that bird. You remember the bird in that old reader that came flying in out of the dark night into a room all lit up by candles and then out the other side, in through an open window and then gone again. Now well, that's the way we live. We, we come in out of the dark, live for a while where it's light and then gone again into the black. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll out there. Through that window we come in and out the other side. 